Where's the thing that's going to do it. There you go. Alright, ready to start. Alright, so hi. Welcome to our talk on teaching kids programming inside of Skiri. I'm Dalian Terry. And I'm Sam Sanu. I work with Dalian on this project. So here's a little bit about us. Uh, we're Sheffield Hallam University students. There we study computer security with forensics. We're also a part of the STEM Ambassadors program, which is run by STEMnet. So Sam mentioned STEMnet. Uh, it's an organization run the STEM Ambassador program. Uh, obviously, STEM stands for Science, Technology, Engineering, and Maths, and we go in local schools, do activities, we do year nine option evenings, lots of advice, and part of these things is ECPC, which Sam's going to mention to you now. So last year, late September, we opened a business called ECPC, which is short for Early Computer Programming Club. Uh, our main objective was to go into schools and teach primary kids programming using schools, uh, using tools like Scratch, Code.org, etc. And it was run as an after school activity rather than just lessons. So as Sam mentioned, we started this in September last year as a university project. Uh, myself and Sam and three other students, um, I manage it. We've been getting a lot of interest, but it's sort of grown into just this big project. We've got loads of schools in South Yorkshire involved. Um, we've been getting a lot of interest, but also we did an interview for BBC Radio Sheffield um, a couple of months ago, which was huge in getting us involved. So. So we were also part of the National Science and Engineer Engineering Week where we went into schools and we did a one hour talk with primary kids and we basically tried to get them engaged in the programming. We talked about the basics of programming and did some fun exercises, games, etc. So we used tools like Scratch, we hooked up the Xbox 360 Connect with it. We didn't bring that here today, we just wanted to show you one of the things we did with an Arduino based board. We also mentioned, um, oops. Ada Lovelace, who was one of the world's first programmers in the 1800s, technically, and how women were quite prominent actually in programming. So we're trying to get girls interested in this as well. And we think that's really important. Uh, Sam mentioned to you about Science Week a little bit briefly, what we did. Uh, we did these with activities such as the one we're about to show you, and we've got some images from that as well. So th this is us in the Science Week where we actually went to schools and these were actually 100 kids. And we went through exercises with them, and they had their own little macros where we, you know, they can follow tutorials. And they were making games using if statements, loops, etc. And this is just one of the several talks we did. We did have a video, but we couldn't get permission from the parents for the kids, so we're going to show that. But there's massive issues. I'm going to show you the demo now. Uh, I'm really scared. Curse. So this is one of the tools we use to get kids engaged. So just a little bit of background before I start it. Uh, it's, a make, it's called a Makey Makey. It's uh, based on an Arduino Leonardo bootloader. And all it does is plug in, plug in crocodile clips to certain keys on the keyboard. And on here, what we do is we show them on the, on the screen what a certain, sort of like event-driven programming. And um, we show them, like, so what does, what does each key do? It plays a note. So if I go to C, which is the up key, that plays a noise on the laptop if you press the up key. And we talk about all the logical so how it changes the logical concept of programming, it changes the costume on the left. And but before we do that with them, we actually this should work hopefully. So you earth yourself. I knew it wouldn't work when I did the program. There we go. And usually works quite well. It worked well this morning, didn't it? Worked very well this morning. <laughs> that one's not connected. Why? <laughs> Sorry. And that's what we do with kids. Uh, it gets them really interested in it, and there's so many things you could do with it. Uh, we had a self Pac Man with some blue tack, and you can do an up, down, left, right, and when they press it and they birth themselves, they can play Pac Man. So it's really interesting. So they play uh, for a while, then we teach them the code behind it. That's the idea. Okay, right. So why are we doing this? Um, I don't want to bore you with loads of. From the, this is from the National Curriculum in England uh, framework. This is coming into place in uh, September 2014, and it's replacing the ICT subject for our, uh, to call computing, and they'll be learning programming. That's the theory behind it. So this is the key stage two framework, and basically kids will be learning coding or using pseudocode. Kids will be learning about you know the basics of programs, how to make programs, how they simply work. They'll also be learning about simple networks, and the World Wide Web and how to use browsers to go get data, etc. Again, breaking the rule of loads of text on the screen, but this is key stage three. The key points we took away from it were uh, 
secondary school is key stage three, so they'll be doing Boolean logic and ors and not. So that's sort of going to electronical engineering as well, but also that's the main concepts of programming as well. Um, two textual programs they're supposed to use. Um, so Python's the main one that a lot of schools use, and I think that's really cool. Our university should start using that, move from C++ to Python. And also binary digits. So this is the plan, but there is a big problem. So we did a lot of research into this and we looked into a lot of reports and we looked at academic and government reports and if you go to the next slide These are one of the reports we looked at, this is the UK Cyber Strategy Landscape Review Report by the National Audit Office Last one, <laughs> in terms of text on the screen uh, Shortage of ICT, we're, we're focusing on cyber security and how we think there's going to be a shortage of um, ICT skills and IT skills and kids understand how a computer works uh, and that's going to affect cyber security so we're trying to get kids more involved with that at a younger age and I mean, also that's not the only problem I think one of the other problems is that school, I mean the government and the, all the educational institutes they are trying to push the national curriculum into schools but the problem is not with them it's with the teachers I mean can, can teachers really teach computer science the answer would be no I mean often did a lot of research into this and they have officially made a statement that uh, there's a skills shortage among ICT teachers. Um, they don't really know a lot about computer science. They're used to teaching word processing packages, databases, presentations, etc. So it is considered a big issue. So me and Sam compared our education. We did ICT. Never got any guidance in programming. It was all off my own back and Sam's own back. It was all word processing. And can they deliver on it? No, they can't. There's a shortage of the teachers that can actually do this. There's even a theory that mathematicians should be teaching computer science. So. Uh, that's the main thing. What we like to do is we like to have a like sort of a, analogy with it where we go, a computer's like a car. So ICT is how to learn to drive the car. But computing and programming is going underneath the car and looking at the carburetor and sort of how can we manipulate the car and change that and for our own uses. That's the main idea that we put, put forward to it. So before we get to the solution, what we think, what should be done about this, we took some quotes from various academics, professionals and cyber security and IT that we've got quotes from who I network with, Sam's network with and who we know personally. So the first one is from Dr David Day, he's at our university at Hallam. Uh, he's a lecturer in forensics and he's also a security consultant for quite a lot of high profile retailers, he's done some work there. Um, also he's quite prominent in catching one of the LulzSec members, so he, he knows what he's talking about in terms of security. Right, so David learned programming from BBC Microcomputers rather than learning ICT like we did and David does agree with everything we said and he he calls students these days codophobics and he believes university students these days are afraid of programming because they never learned it from a young age so now they find it really difficult I mean he also thinks coding is a big part of UK security um, here's another quote from this from Dr Nick Blundell he's a chief software engineer at SecOn so we spoke with Nick, um, I'm going into a role at Sec 1 in June as a pen tester and he's obviously, he was in higher education before so we've been speaking to him, he's talking about how developer training materials and they start out are inherently insecure, I mean it teaches them but they move that on to their advanced careers and they're already, already embedded with vulnerabilities he mentions, buffer overflows, SQL injections and we're going to be talking with him about teaching college students if we move into college students in ECPC and uh, develop tutorials and exercises that we can teach e-safety as well as cyber security as well. Um, so the next quote is from Jesper Jerkinox at Critical Watch, he's the Vice President of Research there in the USA. Um, I reached out to him, we speak on LinkedIn quite a bit and uh, I just expected a quote but he actually wrote an article, a full article on his blog on this so we haven't got the whole link, link to this, we just took really uh, important things that we thought were really useful, Sam will mention these too. So Jesper basically agrees with the fact kids should be learning computer science at an early age. He also thinks that kids should you know, do gamification, play games to learn security like capture the flag, security chance, etc. rather than just sitting in a classroom and learning theory. But his and our views do clash at one point that he thinks kids should choose what they want to learn where we think every student should learn computer science as a mandatory. So the next quote is from Chris Kissing, Senior Manager of Product Development at Citrix. So I know Chris personally, I've been for an interview down at Citrix with him and we're good friends now. Uh, he mentions Micro Model, BBC Micro Model, 
computer and uh, that's also what David Day mentioned so we seem to have noticed a theme how when computers came to the masses how it, it, programming happened quite early on and then there seems to be a shift in the past 10 to 15 years on ICT and how you know how to use a computer this programming seems to have come out of fashion so we need to bring that back in now especially with cyber security so we can integrate programming like we did before we get cyber security in there everyone benefits the industry and the economy in the UK and, that, and, and he also mentioned how Citrix do uh, primary age uh, child visits to Camborne campus in Cambridge which is where they're based in Citrix. The next quote is from Darren Fuller at the, he's the director of SecQuest Information Security. So Darren basically knows all about the national curriculum change and he, he agrees with the fact kids should learn computer science. He also talks about how kids will start from key stage one, they learn about basic GUI programming with games and they when, they, when they get to key stage three, they'll be learning Python, Visual Basic and more textual programming. So the next one quote from Martin O'Neill, he's the managing director of Coursera. This is my favourite quote, it's really concise and it just sort of sums up what we feel about in terms of cyber security and secure coding. He talks about cross-site scripting flaws, for example, in web applications and how, like I, meant, like I mentioned earlier, about how um, developers, when they're learning, they don't think about security and then when later on to the career they need to be retrained and they're, they're not coding securely straight away. So the next one is Peter Collingwood, he's a lecturer at Sheffield University, he teaches software engineering and secure coding. This was a last minute one, uh, he does robotics and teaches kids to teach robots in. And uh, we're going to be doing stuff with Steelcom, so if you come into Steelcom we're doing stuff with, with kids there because uh, we're STEM ambassadors, we have DPS certificates, CRBs, so we can do this. And he thinks it's really important and uh, all these quotes you can see, there's a blog online that I've set up you can look at. Um, but he, he, he feels it's really important, he does, he works the British Computing Society with this. So, two minutes left. So what's the solution? Uh, the British Computing Society are helping with this, uh, with the curriculum change. We mentioned how teachers may not be able to deliver on these demands for computer science. Um, they're going to be doing £25,000 scholarships, which is a massive incentive to get teachers into Computing Society and we feel like that's really important. So eSkills UK is also working with the government to create a cyber security learning scheme where teachers, ICT teachers can go in and they will learn all about computer science, cyber security, etc. This way they will be actually knowledgeable and they'll be able to teach students in the coming future. If you go on eSkills, search Google eSkills UK Big Ambitions, there's a cyber security game there for kids. It's really, really interesting if you want to look at it and how to teach your kids if you've got your own kids or if you work in schools. There's Code Club as well which is similar to what we do at ECPC, uh, it's a not-for-profit organisation, volunteers run, it's not nationwide but we need more help from you guys to get involved with this and solve this problem. So the government is also working with uh, institutions that do stuff like Cyber Security Challenge, Capture the Flag etc. I think it should be more going through the gamification just to learn security rather than going to theory. And the last one's the really most important point. I really would implore you guys, if you're from a security background or even IT, get involved with STEM now. It's free, the STEM Ambassador Program more specifically. And this is from the UK Cyber Security Strategy Report. They're going to continue funding STEM now. So it's not something that's going to disappear due to funding cuts because they think it's really important. So get involved. You get a free DBS certificate. You can get involved with your local, local schools. You get a free, uh, well, it's going to reward your CV, make your CV better rewards the schools, the kids, the teachers, everyone benefits really perfectly and we use code, code.org and scratch and yeah. Uh, thank you for listening, um, we've just been zoomed out on a hacker on a laptop, that's Sam there. Uh, all the article, the quotes are on there on the blog, uh, it's a blog I've just set up, uh, launched in coinciding with this and our Twitter handles there and LinkedIn handles are there. Any questions? Yeah.